What does a $1,000 pen have to offer versus a $150 pen versus a $25 pen? Okay, so essentially you're talking about why would you pay more for a more expensive pen? Okay, so think of pens like vehicles, right? A $25 pen is gonna be like a moped, right? Uh, a $150 pen is gonna be like Honda Accord or like, you know, something Nissan Ultima, like nice, nice pen or nice car. A thousand dollar pen would be like a Bentley, you know, or a Ferrari or something like that. So some of it might deal with performance, but a lot of it is going to deal with some of the intangibles, you know, the luxury, the appeal, the design, the marketing, the branding, the status, those types of things, especially when you get into going from 150 to a thousand dollar pen. There's definitely some of that, some of that stuff that, that you know, intangibles. Um, but basically, when you're in the $25 range, you're going for function over form. You know, you might have some fun colors and stuff like that, but the fit and finish is not going to be as nice. You're not going to have as consistent quality generally, especially when you talk about nib tuning and stuff like that. For a pen that inexpensive, you just can't get a lot of handwork on them because people just don't have the time to spend on that price of pen you know, like they do with a $150 pen. $150 pen, you're gonna get more into individual tuning and testing and, you know, tweaking and that kind of stuff, nib smoothing, grinding, all that. You're gonna have a person doing it instead of a machine, generally, or at least in the final stages kind of testing it, you're gonna have people that are doing that. Um, when you're getting into, th and, and, and a huge jump too, between like those 25 and $150 pens, $150 where you start to get into gold nibs, okay? Price of gold is insane, it's very expensive, it's hard to work with definitely takes more care to use. So just going with a gold nib pen, you're gonna see that jump right up, okay? Um, not to say that you can't have a steel nib in that price range, but generally you don't see gold nibs for less than around $150. You got some that are out there, like the, the Pilot E95S, we have it like 136. So that one's like really pushing down. But generally you're gonna be 140s, 150s on up for those gold nibs. Um, and then you start to get in some cooler filling mechanisms too. You're starting to get some piston fillers instead of cartridge converter or, or an eyedropper, you know, and those kind of things. When you get into thousand dollar pens, that's when you start to get into limited edition things. You know, you get into materials that are really hard to find or hard to work with. You know, you get into celluloids and like the OMAS, the cotton resins and some really kind of unique things you might be dealing with, um, you know, pens that are made out of wood or that are, that have, um, you know, maquille and like hand, like artistry technique and engraving and, and enameling and abalone shell inlays and certain lacquers and stuff like that that really require a lot more expertise, craftsmanship, handwork. Um, you know, you get into pens that are made of sterling silver or, you know, things like that. Um, so it's, it's, it gets a lot harder to justify the price as you get further up. You know, there's a thing called the law of diminishing returns that you've probably heard of, you know, and it's a curve that goes like this. And so basically the law of diminishing returns, if you got your X axis here, this has to do with the cost, no, this has to do with the performance of a pen, right? Or the benefits that you would get. Um, and then your Y axis is the cost. So what happens is, you know, when you're going from like a $4 pen to a $25 pen, the increase in price is not that significant on your y-axis, where the increase in performance could be quite significant. It depends on the pen, obviously, but it could be quite significant for just a little bit more money, you're getting a lot more function. As you get further up the curve, you're having to pay a lot more in cost to get just a little bit more benefit, or maybe the benefits are not worth it to you. You know, if you don't care about it, whether a pen is celluloid versus acrylic acetate, then it's not gonna be worth it for you to pay that price. You know, you might have a brand, like I'll use Platinum as an example. Platinum has their 3776 model pen that sells for around, you know, $200 or so. Gold nib, all that kind of stuff. You get that same pen made out of a celluloid or made out of something like that, price is gonna double immediately just from having that different material. Same nib, same everything else. So if you don't care about that material, the price is a lot more significant, but it's not worth it to you. So that's when it gets into all these kinds of things. And then you also get into, you know, themes and the presentation, the box, the, um, the thought, the history, the, all that kind of stuff that all plays into it, that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, it's like a fine set of golf clubs or fine wine or something like that. If you, unless you are really have a refined palate, you're not gonna appreciate 
that more expensive stuff. So unless you're, you know, like Omos is a perfect example because Omos, they don't have a lower end stuff, you know. Um, this Ogiva is like one of their le less expensive pens they've ever done. Um, but they have pens that are easily up into the thousands of dollars. But what you're, what you're getting with those is the whole theme, the design. You know, I've got a pen here like the 360. It's triangle shaped. You know, the fact that they have a triangle shaped pen, you can't just turn a triangle shaped pen on a machine lathe. You have to cut this thing by hand and polish it by hand. And there's so much handwork that goes into this just and if you're like i don't care i don't want a triangle pen i want a circular pen well there you go like that's part of the reason why it may not be worth it for you to get a more expensive pen but if you want a triangle shaped pen like this you're gonna have to pay because in order to get this shape it requires a lot more work so you know it's things like that you have to you have to really like be deep into this stuff and really understand what some of this is to actually appreciate some of these finer things and then once you do that's when you're in trouble because you're going to go broke. But anyway, <laughs> I'm at that point myself. Anyway, 